now that we have talked about single gene traits, um, like the idea of having freckles and not freckles, um, I think that we can look at some more complex things like eye color. The thing with eye color is that in science we understand two genes very clearly and those two genes help to code for three different colors. Um, those colors are brown, um, also here green, and then blue. Um, every year students are like, but my eyes are special and they're gray or mine are hazel or my color change. Um, and the beauty of science is that we're always finding answers to new questions. These are the three ones that we fully understand how they work. Uh, there are probably more genes that code for eye colors, but these are dominant and recessive ones um, that we can really understand at this level and what we're talking about. If you want to know more about the other ones, you can go do research online. Um, you could also, you know, become a geneticist. So brown is dominant. Interestingly, green is also dominant. And then blue is recessive, but the key is they don't all go on the same gene. So um, I'm going to draw one pair of chromosomes here and two gene slots. We're going to call the top one the brown-blue gene, and the bottom one is going to be the green-blue gene. Now, technically, they don't go on the same chromosome, but for the sake of, you know, working, we're going to do this. So on the top one, brown or blue can go on there. The thing is, if there is a brown on gene one, um, this is the gene that will overpower the second gene. So if brown is present on the first gene, it's the strongest of all of the eye colors, and it will automatically give the person brown eyes uh, regardless of what is on the second gene, because if it's brown on the first, the second one doesn't matter. Even if there's only one um, brown allele, the person will have brown eyes. So it's very interesting that one brown can overpower three other alleles. Even if you have one brown and three blue, still brown. Pretty wild how strong the brown trait is because the first gene turns the second gene on and off. Now, when both become blue on the first gene, it turns the second gene on. It doesn't mean that the person will have blue eyes. It means that the second gene is going to matter. So if we both have blue, second gene gets turned on. Now, on this case, you can see up above that green is dominant to blue. So you have blue on top, green on the bottom, you got green eyes. Because green is dominant to blue on this second gene. If you have one green on the second gene, then it also overpowers the blue. So look here, green is still more powerful then three blue alleles, because that first one is just turning the second gene on. So the only way that we get blue eyes is to have two blue on the top and two blue at the bottom, because blue is incredibly recessive. Um, so that is how people get blue eyes. Also, you can probably guess there um, is a rarity of the blue eye trait um, in many areas of the world because of you know, having to have four blue alleles to get blue eyes. So we're going to look at hair color here. And again, um, a lot of you aren't going to be happy with this answer because you don't feel like your hair falls into these categories. But we have um, genes for blonde hair, brown hair, and red hair. Brown, I'm sure you can guess, is what kind of trait? hey -oh, that's right. It's dominant. Um, blonde, I'm not going to write in the yellow marker because you can't really see it is um, a recessive trait to brown. And then red, we're gonna write a little r because it's kind of a different scenario. Um, the blonde is recessive to brown, but it's actually dominant to red. And then I messed up there. And then uh, red is uber recessive. So just like before, I'm gonna draw one chromosome with the two genes, even though the two genes do not exist on the same chromosome. And um, we have a brown blonde gene number one and a red blonde gene number two. Just like before, gene one is the gene that will turn on gene two. So if you have one brown on the first one, you have automatic brown hair. The other gene is turned off. So if you have a brown and a blonde and then a blonde and a blonde, it doesn't matter. No blonde, you have brown hair because brown is like super duper powerful. Um, 
If you have two brown, obviously same scenario, then you would have brown hair. So the only way that you get anything with blonde or red hair is if the second gene is turned on. So you gotta have two blonde on that top gene. And then now gene number two is turned on. And gene number two will then determine if you have blonde hair or red hair. On the second gene now, a really peculiar thing happens where blonde is actually dominant to the red. So we have kind of a, a spectrum of dominance here with hair color where brown's the strongest, blonde is second strongest, and then red. So if you have one blonde on that gene or two blondes, then you have blonde hair um, because red is like super recessive. So the only way that you get red hair is to have two reds on that second gene because you have to have two recessive alleles. Um, pretty wild how these multiple gene traits work out. Um, but this is how we get kind of that complexity of human life. Um, now, as far as coloring goes, I always like to throw in this little, uh, you know, lesson on human coloring because it's been the source of a lot of discrimination for a lot of years. Um, and coloring genes are a result of a pigment called melanin. And that melanin is basically the human color. Um, the more pigment that you have, the darker that your skin, hair, and eyes will be. Um, and that pigment, the amount of pigment that a person has, is determined based on your ancestors. Because, you know, you inherit things from your parents, they inherit it from their parents. So to understand this, we have to look at the world. And here's my amazing map of the world. Bam, you've never seen a better globe in your whole entire life. It's so beautiful. Okay, so melanin is your natural sunscreen. It protects your sun. It's the thing that when you go outside and you're in the sun a lot during the summer that you have a tan, it's because your body starts producing more and more melanin. Uh, there's this magical line that we draw on the globe called the equator, and it's the center of the globe. Um, the equator is the area that gets the most direct sunlight. So people that have ancestry from tropical regions, which are those areas within 20 degrees north or south of the equator, um, have more melanin in their eyes and skin, and then typically this follows their hair as well. Um, because they needed to be protected from the sun. Brown hair, brown eyes, brown skin. Um, it keeps the sun from damaging. The brown eyes um, keep the, the retina safe from the skin, the sun's rays. Um, the brown skin, the darker skin, um, also doesn't get sunburned. So it makes it easy for those people to be out in the day. Um, if people with very fair skin and very light eyes were to go and just try to survive in those tropics, it would be very difficult um, for them to do that. So it is a stronger trait and often more common um, because that's where people originated. As far as we know, the best evidence that we have right now is that um, the earliest people kind of came from those tropical regions. So it stands to reason that the early ancestors that had more melanin um, would have survived better. They wouldn't have gotten sunburned. They would have been able to see better, to hunt, uh, and their traits would have been passed on. Now, people with ancestors from latitudes farther from the equator didn't need as much sunlight. So we're talking like Northern Europeans, um, Northern Asians, Northern Americans, they have lighter skin, they have lighter eyes because that melanin wasn't as necessary. Also really low latitudes, um, although we see those people um, not getting there quite as soon and so not as much of the lighter coloring there, um, typically in that southern part. Um, and those lighter eyes help people to see a little bit better in low light, um, but people who have light eyes tend to have a lot of issues with you know, the sun hurting their eyes too. So melanin is our pigment and it determines um, kind of our skin tones.